back to from around Los Angeles everybody thank you so much for hanging with us Gary Cox here we have an extraordinary program for you during the course of the next half hour as we are going to be featuring the Shaolin Temple the Kung Fu Temple based in the city of Lamita we're going to be featuring a, a truly extraordinary individual his name is Manuel Marquez Mr. Marquez has been involved in martial arts for over 25 years he has achieved uh, quite a bit of success in those 25 years. He is now a world-renowned martial arts expert. We're going to be uh, showing with you, uh, sharing with you, I should say, some uh, demonstrations later on in this program. We'll also be showing you a little bit of video from the Kung Fu: The Legend Continues series, in which we'll, in which Mr. Marquez is a stunt coordinator as well as a uh, body double. We'll be showing some of that to you as well. So we do have quite a bit to talk about. We're going to attempt to edu educate you a little bit on uh, the overall martial arts and kung fu society and and how it breaks down in the hierarchy of things but i'm very pleased to now welcome manuel marquez uh manuel welcome to from around los angeles it's Thank a you. pleasure to Thank see you, you. Uh, let's begin with your temple over in lamita the shaolin uh kung fu temple oh, okay. how did that get started in and what goes on well over actually there? it started 25 years ago uh to make any kind of a school or temple you must achieve oneself uh, as a mastering uh, an art uh, so through the years of training to Taekwondo, Tang Soo Do, uh, the Korean arts, and into the Shotokan arts, I wanted to broaden my range and went into the Chinese arts, which is the Shaolin Temple, or the Shaolin style. Uh, progressing to that with my masters that I have, um, accomplishing the different feats of getting my black sash, and then asking my Sifu and my grandmaster uh, for position of the, the sect. Uh, that is, being able to have a school underneath the Federation's name. And there he gave me the, the spot. And what I understand I I is that that is quite a unique situation, that uh, uh, nowhere else in the United States of America is there a temple with that specific title. Tell us about the importance of that. Well, the importance is uh, it goes back a long ways. We're talking about 2,000 years ago. Uh, the Chinese family, the Gar, uh, they achieve things through their merits. Uh, they, they, nothing is given according to just in, in frame of time. You have to earn everything. So in my case, uh, especially being an American, uh, non-Asian, I had to achieve a certain level of guidance from my masters and okay and written permission to get the Shaolin Temple's permission. Uh, in turn, they gave me the permission and uh, I opened up my school. Now, you have achieved quite a bit of success in, in the relatively short amount of time that you've been practicing uh, this particular kind of martial art. I understand that uh, you have been granted uh, uh, quite a compliment by being placed high up in the uh, Thai Mantis Society. Do I have that right? Yes. Uh, actually, my Sifu is eighth generation Sifu in the Thai Mantis Federation from Jiju Kai from Hong Kong. Uh, I am ninth generation, and there is probably a couple Americans that are allowed in that sect. And so that, that just shows how indeed rare of a situation it is for any American to, to, to belong in that. And, and, and I even understand, uh, Manuel, that uh, you, uh, there was quite a bit of uh, uh, sincere 
um, apprehension among other individuals within the Thai Mandarin Association when you were awarded that stature. Many individuals felt that uh, you were not the person that should have been given that stature. Yes, yes um, it is. Tell us about the, the complications. Okay, and, and, well, uh, uh, remember, it's been passed down from family to family, and it's all, all been Asian, Chinese. And the um, thing is, is if they step out of the boundary of out of the bloodline, uh, they know that it's kind of forsaking the, the traditional way of giving it and keeping it in the family. Um, unfortunately, for me achieving my level, my master did give that to me. And there's one problem, that is the other teachers that are Chinese. They had to deal with the acceptance of my position. Okay, let's now look at uh, some photographs that you were so kind to bring along. Um, they are a variety of photographs, and you'll explain a little bit about each uh, one that we see. They, they'll be up for about 10 or 12 seconds each, and they incorporate different aspects. Uh, okay. Now, this is yourself? I yes, believe. that is in the Kung Fu series. That is one of the Du Li stands, which is one of the most complicated stances on plum blossom poles, which you're, you learn how to fight and move your body on the positions of the poles. Um, Okay, here, uh, Rob Moses, Sifu Rob Moses, he's one of the chief instructors at Time Manus. He was with me at the Toronto, up in Canada, filming it, and we were just getting ready to do a part as a, you know, a gangster in the bar or something like that. And there's yourself with Mr. Carradine and one other and gentleman. And Kim Chan. Kim Chan and David Carradine. David Carradine has been around with my master for a long time. Uh, he's studied uh, quite a few things with him, and he's been in a lot of movies. Kim Chan has been in uh, quite a few other movies. Uh, they're both talented. Okay, for him, the Neanderthal, he was the, the kid that was portraying young Peter Kane, or, you know, in this series, in the new series. And that's and you in I, the middle there, for those that are Yes, aren't. and I doubled him and uh, everybody else on the set and had my own part. And we'll, we'll see more of that uh, later mm -hmm. on in the program. Now, in the one so, um, part, we had the two Shallon priests, uh, those the gold robe people. Uh, they are the ones that are supposed to be the high priests. Now, here I was trying to teach the David Carradine and one of the other actors of staff set, and um, unfortunately they didn't get it right, so I had to double for him on this part. So you, you've got quite a bit of responsibility on the set of that particular yes. program. Okay, to the right uh, is Mike Vendrell. He was the original choreographer on the first series of the set. Not the one in the first uh, original series, but the new one. Right. Uh, he is replaced by Al Leong now, and that's Kim Chan to the left as the ancient. Ouch. Here's a demonstration we're doing uh, with showing Nagong, high level internal breaking bricks on my head, having them sledged off my, my head. Ouch. That does take a lot of internal strength. I and can here's imagine. Just showing a different angle of how the impact is. Uh, it, if anybody was to do this normally, they would seriously get hurt. So and otherwise, it's a high level of Kung Fu. This shows a different soft form of internal palm. If you notice, the hand is not above the head and I'm not jumping off the ground. It is strictly control and soft. That is the highest position of internal Negong. Here we're demonstrating for the Chinese uh, festival in uh, downtown LA, and I was awarded one of the dragons. As in, they have five Chinatowns in the United States, and there's five masters per, and I'm the first American wow. to, to portray this. That's yeah. absolutely wonderful. So uh, obviously, you, you do travel around the world uh, demonstrating yes. this particular form mm -hmm. of uh, martial arts and whatnot. And here we have uh, one final shot. And that's saluting the last part in the Bamboo Plaza, and that's when we have our acceptance. Okay, and we're back. I just want to point out that this, these stack of cement bricks that you see right here, folks, are going to be busted up in just a few minutes by uh, Sifu Marquez. So we're going to ask that you stick around for that. That's coming up in, in just, just a minute. But before we do go to the break, uh, Manuel, um, it is a fairly a complicated hierarchy uh, within the martial arts community, uh, whether it's a one association or another in the, uh, from, from respectively different countries. How could you simplify that for our viewers, uh, real briefly, if you could? Uh, well, for one, any, any type of martial arts, uh, it takes a lot of structure and time. Um, and then two is the diligence and persistence of being, being able to push yourself to the limit. Because in reality, if you are trained by the old masters, they do not tr train you the right way as in American eyes. They train you the old traditional, the Shaolin way, which is very hard on the body, physically, mentally, and spiritually. Uh, it, it is a hard guidance because, uh, for one, you have to do everything that they say. And that is obtaining enlightenment is through strict diets, uh, exercise programs, and a lot of things for the body. 
um, in, in certain internal levels. So it involves, it incorporates quite a bit, uh, both from an from a internal and external uh, perspective as well. Yes, it does. Why did you choose Shaolin? I mean, why, why particular? Well, okay, I was uh, taking karate for many years, and um, unfortunately, I wanted to learn the holistic medicines for the Kung Fu, acupressure, acupuncture, moxibustion, reflexology, twin uh, cupping, and, um, and the, the only way that they had Chinese martial arts is what they have weaponry, and they have the hard and soft, the yin and yang theory, which a lot of these styles do not have. So in the long run, I'm, I've learned literally three times as much compared to the other way. Okay, we're gonna take a short time out and when, when we come back, we'll be uh, uh, looking at uh, some demonstrations by Mr. Marquez along with two of his students. So please folks, stay with us. Much more coming up on this edition of From Around Los Angeles. <laughs> Teresa Mitchell doesn't believe in heroes. And I'm no hero or anything, but I, I love what I do. She does believe in volunteering. She helps neighbors get medical care for their children. Hi, me. How are you doing? Ethel Lee doesn't believe in heroes. We can't do everything for all people. She does believe in helping babies. Keep up the good work. I will try. I love you. I love you too. She helps mothers stop drinking during pregnancy. We present this little plaque to you, so when you look upon your wall, you can think about us all the time. Right? <laughs> if you don't believe in heroes, remember. The more we work together. You don't have to believe in heroes to be one. Be a hero to a child in your community. Call 1-800-6-CHILDREN. And welcome back to From Around Los Angeles, everyone. We are now going to be treated to a demonstration by Sifu Marquez and one of his students. Real briefly, uh, Manuel, what are you going to do here? We're going to show the, uh, the audience a, a form of self-defense, a Shaolin way. Okay, and, and Jacqueline Lopez, you are going to be the uh, person fending off the attacker here. Real quickly, Jacqueline, before you do that exercise, uh, tell me about uh, the uh, Shaolin Temple. Uh, uh, what has it done for you uh, as a student over there? Well, it has taught me uh, discipline, self-control, and to have patience with myself and others. Okay, that's wonderful. That sums up quite a bit. And uh, Sifu Marquez, take it away. Okay, the first technique is basically what most women do. They get encountered by a movement of being grabbed on. <laughs> Next one is a throat grab, a typical thing. Most, there's two different ways. This is a basic push. Now this is a movement with grabbing. In a situation, if she was going to be encountered from the back, okay. A lot of times, there's so many different techniques. Another technique would be crossing the arm and driving the person to the ground. This is a side sweep motion. In all the techniques we do from our school, this is, comes straight from our shell in technique. Another one is just basically to get rid of the wrist when grabbing without inflicting or hitting the body. Now here is joining and locking on the joint. There's in the range of a high sweep or technique when throwing a punch at somebody. Coming from behind is, or and excuse me, from the front, is so this is a major area. In reality, if somebody's going to grab, okay. and no, another motion is grabbing inside, reversing, locking, and holding, and locking inside the hand. Here's another motion of striking to the back fist. Okay. 
Okay, uh, Jacqueline Lopez, thank you so much for demonstrating those techniques. And uh, um, I would imagine that's just, uh, let's get your son over here. Nicholas, why don't you come over and Nicholas for the first part here is gonna pick up the mat. So why don't we just uh, step aside there real briefly. Um, and what's up next is that uh, Sifu Marquez is gonna do some, uh, some uh, Thai Mantis, I believe, with his son, Nicholas. Tai Chi Chuan, excuse me, Tai Chi Chuan, and uh, real quickly, tell us about that, Manuel. What are we going to see next? Okay, Tai Chi Chuan is called the Grand Ultimate Fist. It is used for protection, but more of a healing aspect. It made so that it, it creates all the elements, fire, earth, metal, wood, and water, to a balance. It stimulates the body, tonifies, and, and controls the body to make it heal. Okay, and let me just ask Nicholas a real quick question. How long have you been doing this uh, with your dad, Nicholas? The Tai Chi Chuan, about yeah. um, one month. One month, and uh, what's it like uh, being down at the Shaolin Temple? What have you learned down there as a student? Um, Kung Fu and just keep myself out of trouble and just basic things of um, Kung Fu. Okay, great. All right, Sifu Marquez. Okay, that was absolutely beautiful. Um, um, Nicholas, if you'd like, you can go ahead and set up the, uh, the blocks next. Uh, why don't we go ahead and do that, uh, uh, Manuel? And while the blocks are being set up, you can tell me, uh, Nicholas kind of uh, touched upon a good point just a moment ago when he said, uh, as a student down at your temple, it uh, provides him an opportunity uh, not only to learn the disciplines and whatnot, but to stay out of trouble. And I would imagine for a lot of kids coming down there, uh, Manuel, um, you're doing just that. You're putting these kids on the right path. Well, you know, for one, they, in the old days, we used to have like teen posts and stuff like that. Uh, a lot of opportunities to do things for the kids. They take our PE out of the schools. Uh, they take the discipline out of the schools. And uh, now we have to have some way to focus their energies. To focus on the energy of a child is to make them work out. They like that physical strength. So to keep that, that kind of tones the mind and, and stimulates and makes them have to think, why are they doing these bad things instead of working out and using this in a positive outlook. Who can come down and be a student at the Shaolin Temple in Lamita? Uh, who's eligible to do so? Well, we have anybody from eight years old on up to 100. It depends on what kind of drive. If you want it for healing aspects, combative, uh, or um, competition forms, whatever it is, there's a different ways. Uh, there, we, all, we show so many different forms from the Shaolin to the praying mantis to Tai Chi Chuan, Qigong exercises on rape prevention for women. Okay, and uh, so there's a wide variety of classes uh, to choose from uh, for any individual out there of, of any age then in general. Yes, every age. Now what are you going to do for us next here? Okay, this is a form of negong. It is a high level internal. I advise nobody to try to this because uh, you can get hurt. It takes a lot of time and, and patience and training to develop your hands and your body for this exercise. And you're going to break uh, three bricks or uh, cement bricks, is that right? Yeah. Manuel? Uh -huh. And, uh, okay, I'm going to... Iron palm. They call it iron palm. They call it iron palm. Okay, and I will let you do that. Manuel Marquez. Okay, in, in a lot of styles, you would see them jump up and hammer down with the fist. That is an external art form. In Shaolin, they would do it in a single slap. So that means that it would have to be cultivated through a different channel of energy. Okay, it's a little slap, just a single little slap. That, uh, you made that uh, look really easy, Manuel, but obviously it's not. 
uh, you would advise no one to try this at home. Um, what do we have next? Okay, this one here is a form of a higher level internal, is, is head kong, okay? You're going to use your head. Okay, and finally, we have uh, two more uh, two more uh, cement bricks to break. Uh, what kind of technique will We're be do one? The backhand. Okay. There you see the uh, bricks, the D brick, the back of the hand. Okay. See, in kung fu, to do acupressure massage, you must learn how to stimulate the chi out of the hands and the body. And chi must not go just part of the body, it must go through the whole entire body. Very good. How are we doing on time? Now we have three bricks here. Okay, this is usually in, in reality, I'll do a lot bigger stack of everything, from palm to uh, head and everything. Okay, see, when you're striking an opponent, you're going to be using different fo forms and functions of the body. Okay, the elbow is a simple little task, okay? Okay, great. All right. Sifu Manuel Marquez uh, doing uh, quite a bit of brick breaking for us here. And folks, once again, uh, do not try this at home. He had the assistance of his... Uh, uh, two students, Jacqueline Lopez and son, Nicholas Marquez. We're going to take a short time out and come back. Stay with us. The children of this nation are being held prisoner. Their playgrounds are no place to play in. Their neighborhoods are no place to grow up in. Their athletic fields are no place for sports. Their world has become a jail. Their captors are fear and violence. Your kids shouldn't have to grow up this way. Give your children back their childhood. Mommy. In the fight against violent crime, you have a weapon. 1-800-WE-PREVENT. Do something now. 1-800-WE-PREVENT. Together, we will take a bite out of crime. Welcome back to From Around Los Angeles, everyone. Thank you for staying with us. Just to prove to you that these were the real things that Sifu Marquez just broke. Uh, although they look like butter folks, they're very much uh, cement blocks. And, uh, and uh, that was quite amazing, uh, Manuel. Thank you me. really did make that seem uh, done with complete ease. Robert, um, uh, let, let's go ahead and give out the phone number to the Shaolin Temple before uh, we run out of time as we do only have a couple minutes left. Should you want more information about this organization, uh, find out about uh, some of the structures and what they offer, you can call the number right there on your screen, 539-1374 uh, in the 310 area code. Again, it's 539-1374 uh, and we'll be more than happy to tell you about their ongoing activities at the Shaolin Temple in the city of Lamita. Um, I want to hold up a couple of these uh, uh, magazine covers that you were so kind to bring along. And perhaps, uh, Manuel, you can tell us about uh, who these individuals are. I, I know that, uh, if we can get maybe a tighter shot here, that this is one of your masters. That is the Grandmaster right? R.Q. Wong. He is the Grandmaster of the Southern Five Animals, the Toily Foot Makong, Tiger Crane, Snake, Dragon Leopard, and Eagle of the Southern Arts. And this is a quite a, an important gentleman within the... He uh, is one of the most important uh, masters in the United States. Okay, then secondly, we have this gentleman right here, and... Uh, that is Lane Cam Yuen. He was the choreographer for the original series on the Kung Fu series. He is my master of the Northern Shaolin and Northern Praying Mantis, Seven Star Tai Chi and Plum Flower Praying Mantis. 
And um, the masters uh, are obviously an integral part to the martial arts hierarchy and whatnot. Uh, obviously, you are a master to many students, and yes. you are a student to some masters. Um, and that is a, a hierarchy that is to be taken extremely seriously, is it not? Yes, it is. Yes, it is. Okay, the uh, Kung Fu series, The Legend Continues. Uh, we're now going to take a look at a little bit of video from that series. And uh, I just want to point out, um, the first individual that you will see when we roll this video in is Mr. Marquez. He will have no hair on his head, but he'll be whipping a sword around as well. And uh, well, why don't we go ahead and roll that, and uh, Manuel and I will uh, tell you a little bit about exactly what you're seeing as we progress. This is from the uh, uh, Legend uh, Continues series, the uh, Kung Fu series. It's obviously Mr. Carradine. Yes. That's one of the other teachers that of Cebu Kamyun. This is here it talks about the Shaolin Temple, which is, we are of the southern branch, but there is another one. And there you are. On the plum um, flower pole that you're talking about is whipping the Dao, the single Dao. Looking pretty good there. Now we have another scene coming up here in just a moment where um, there is a fight between uh, uh, David Carradine and one other character. And when you do not see that other character's face, ladies and gentlemen, that is Mr. Manuel Marquez. And These connections right there are the Tan Tui's, the exercises that we teach in our uh, system. You're going to be uh, doubling this gentleman. Khan, yes. So they are about to fight, and again, when you don't see the face of that gentleman, it is Manuel Marquez as a double. Yeah, in, in that time, I got to uh, double everybody but David Carradine. And there you are, mm -hmm. getting flipped. This was a hard scene because it was a one-shot deal. Um, so I tried to make it look good for David. Unfortunately, uh, some things did happen when I flipped him. You can't be flipping the star around that much. No. Uh, and uh, so that just gives you a little bit of an idea as to uh, what the uh, talents and skills of Mr. Manuel Marquez um, uh, provide for that particular television show. Uh, we are just about out of time. Um, you're about to take a trip abroad, a quite an important trip. Yes. Real briefly, uh, tell us about that. I'm going to go and represent the United States in the Xingxu, uh, China, for the 1500 anniversary of the Shaolin Temple. And I am going with a, a team for the United States, and we're going to compete. And I hope to God that we place, and we're going to learn a lot, and um, it'll be a really fun uh, trip for all of us. All kinds of holistic medical approaches are contained within martial arts. Uh, there's no time to go into it now, but uh, is that, that's perhaps one aspect that is overlooked. Yes, yes. Uh, actually, in Kung Fu, you have to learn the healing arts. That is part of the yin and yang theory. Yin is for the physical forms, and the yan is the healing art. Okay. Manuel Marquez of the Shaolin Temple in the city of Lamita. Um, sorry we didn't have time to get to some of the weapons demonstrations, but the, the demonstrations that you did provide were very breathtaking. I'd like to thank yourself as well as your two, uh, your two students, Jacqueline Lopez and uh, Nicholas Marquez. It's been a pleasure to see you, Manuel, and uh, best of luck over there yeah. in the competition, and maybe we can get you back in the studio in the not-too-distant future. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Manuel Marquez of the Shaolin Temple in the city of Lamita. Of course, as always, folks, I'd like to thank you most of all for watching this edition of From Around Los Angeles. I'm Gary Cox. Good night. Everyone has their own idea of a hero.